Kathy um, text here because she wants to say that neuron works. That's that's her opinion. But you you came right out and said it. Um, you know that that you feel like the product works. She she believes it works and it needs to be available for those um, that have ALS. Do you have any doubt, Kathy, in your own mind that neuron helped you during the trial? Is there any doubt at all? None. No, there's no doubt in her mind. We were just discussing it the other day in regards to it. Hey everybody, Mike Henson here for ALS News Now. I uh, want to take just a quick moment and welcome you to another Neurone interview this evening. Um, I have two ladies uh, out in LA, uh, the LA area, that are going to speak with us here in just a moment about their experience with Neurone. Um, Kathy Maggie Martin, you'll see here uh, on some of the online on Facebook as Kathy Maggie Martin. Her name's actually Kathy. Martin and her wife, Emily Ropp. They are really, really cool ladies. We had a great interview. Um, Kathy's in a unique position where uh, she got the drug, we think, nobody knows for sure, but did really well and now is starting, sadly, to progress again. And I'm going to have her explain this to you. Um, this interview is, uh, I don't know, it's about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. It's a short enough interview because we got pretty much everything we needed very quickly. Um, she has had three opinions about ALS. So there's no question that Kathy had ALS, has ALS, excuse me. Um, and I want you to, to keep in mind a few things. Uh, Neurone is not a cure for ALS. Uh, it does not put ALS into remission. Um, it is not a long-term solution. Basically, people that are getting neuron that we think in trial right now. And I'm up now up to uh, 16 people that I've identified as either having a small result, uh, a moderate result, or an incredible result. 16 people. Now, you would think that it would be really, really easy to find people to come forward and to talk, but it's not. Uh, some folks have been sur uh, subjected to being, you know, harassed, um, you know, being called liars basically about their condition. Um, I think you're going to find that as we do more of these, and there will be more coming, that we're going to start to build this irrevocable case, a substantial case for the immediate emergency approval of Brainstorm's Neuron product. About 45%, roughly, let's call it 50 for round numbers, percent of people are, quote, responders to Brainstorm. To neuron, excuse me. That means that only about one out of two people will actually, once given the real drug uh, as part of, uh, you know, post-approval, still only about 50% of the people will have a response. Now, I want to say something about this. The fact that we have a therapy out there that can stop or slow drastically, even a little bit or a moderate amount or a lot, slow stop or reverse the progression of the symptoms of ALS in 50% of the people and yet it's not approved, is borderline criminal at this point, okay? You're going to hear a very compelling story tonight. It's kind of sad, too, because we have a question now as a society to answer. Are we going to allow thousands and thousands of more Americans to die because we're looking for that final number? In other words, will the response rate be 46% or will it be 38%? Will it be 55% since this is three doses? And frankly, at this point, who the hell cares? If it's anywhere in that area, it doesn't matter. It's, it, the final number does not matter. Also, there are still people out there that, frankly, do not believe that neuron works. Okay, They just don't believe it. Um, and doing these videos takes a lot of courage. Kathy has lost her speech now. She had it during the trial, and it went away after she stopped the trial. Okay, It's been uh, about four months since her last injection. Um, we are now choosing in America to let people die from ALS while there's a therapy out there that is stuck in this phase three trial trying to figure out what the final number will be. We're talking about a product that has been proven safe time and time and time again. And we're talking about ALS. It's the top dog. It is the top of the food chain in the medical community. In the disease world, ALS is as bad as it gets. 
And the fact that we have something that can slow this disease down in 50, at roughly 50% of the people and it's unavailable is tragic. It's inhumane and it is wrong. I'm going to roll this interview now, and I want you to keep in mind, I do apologize. There is a slight delay, so sometimes I over-talk, uh, and, I, and I don't mean to do that. It's just it's really hard to do these online. But um, these ladies are awesome. Just had a blast with them. So let's take a listen now at uh, Kathy and her wife, Emily. I'm very, very happy today to be joined by two lovely ladies, um, one of whom was in the Neurone trial. I'm going to switch over here now, and I'd like to introduce you to Kathy Martin and Emily Rupp, her wife. How are you guys doing tonight out in LA, California, ladies? Doing good. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. So um, Kathy has ALS, like I do, and um, her voice is a little bit impaired. Uh, her wife, Emily, is going to be doing most of the uh, speaking this evening, and I imagine Kathy will kind of chime in with yeses and nos and that kind of good stuff like like <laughs> like ALS people do like us. So, um, well, thank you, first of all, for joining us. I very much appreciate it. You know, we've been working very hard, ladies, to try to find uh, people who were in the neurone trial. Uh, you and Kathy uh, are going through this awful, awful situation uh, like my wife and I are. Will you just kind of give us a little bit of background on you and Kathy, if you don't mind, and, and tell us a little bit about how the disease started going, if you don't mind, how, how you knew something was wrong. I give her about two and a half years. Um, she started having slurred speech, almost like you were drinking, but she wasn't. Right. Um, yeah, October 2017 is when um, we started noticing her slurred speech. Um, we, we weren't sure what it was. Um, we waited a little while to think that it would go away. And then we finally went to a neurologist to get tested because her mom had had a um, brain aneurysm um, okay. in her younger years. And um, so I was concerned it could be that. And so we went to get to take that out of the play and we went and saw a neurologist in October, um, around October 2017. I'm sorry, we actually saw him in February, February 2018. It took us a little while to actually okay. get in and see somebody. So once we saw the first neurologist, um, he kind of thought that it was going to be ALS. It was something he had never seen before starting up here in the throat. He had seen, I'm sorry, he had seen it once before. Okay. Um, and he's like, well, I think it could be ALS, but there's no test for it. So um, we did a bunch of tests, all the um, neurology, um, muscle tests and speech tests and all of that right. came back negative for ALS. And so um, we were hoping that it wasn't. And we went back and we t showed him all the tests. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. I was probably wrong. And then um, um, Kathy still continued to have the slurred speech. And then um, she started feeling a little bit of um, muscle weakness in her left hand. So we went back for a second opinion and um, for a different neurologist and maybe to maybe a different specialty of neurology. And we kind of got the same thing. Um, this okay. time when we did some of the tests, it actually showed some um, muscles. Uh, the muscle test actually showed um, more positive for the ALS. She had an EMG done, which, you know, as you know, are very painful. Hurt a lot, didn't it? Yeah, they do. Yes. They hurt. Um, and so the second time you got a confirmation basically with an EMG that something was wrong. You know, at a certain point, like, did you did you both decide to do some research and start to fight and like, oh, I'm going to see if there's anything out there that might stop this or help this? Um, Kathy pretty much didn't sleep. <laughs> I've been for, there. Yeah. She was on the internet researching everything about it. Her she her friend Gail was researching what she cared about it. Um, she has friends that are in different nursing um, things. Everybody was trying to research something about it. Okay. Um, and then we heard about a doctor up in San Francisco um, that specialized in the ALS. And so mm -hmm. we sought her out because we wanted to verify one. We, we actually went for a third opinion because third we're, opinion. We just, okay. it's not, it's very tough to accept this. Yes, it is. Um, but at this point we were like, we want to verify, you know, cause doc medicine is practice. So, um, 
we wanted to make her. And so we went to up to San Francisco for a neurologist up there and she again confirmed it. And, um, she gave us a lot of ideas of different um, research that's out there. Um, and she actually talked about the neuron um, stem cell research. Okay. Um, and we live in L.A. And so there was one in Orn, uh, Irvine, UC Irvine. Right. UC Irvine's one of the test sites. That's right. And so Kathy actually reached out to them um, to try to find out what she needed to do or how to become involved in that particular um, stem cell research, and they got back to her fairly quickly um, because all of her testing that we had, had already done um, showed that she would be a good candidate for it. Okay. And she hadn't her main her main issue was her speech, and her palate was losing strength, and her tongue right. was losing strength, and a little bit of strength loss in the left hand. But other than that, everything else was pretty normal. So they they figured she would be a good candidate for it, and so we started almost immediately once we found out about it within That's a month great. or two. Uh, I'm glad that you actually had three diagnoses uh, or diagnoses because um, we want to make sure that uh, we're always clear with people that, I know this sounds crazy, but some people have said, well, we don't think some of the neuron recipients really have had ALS. Um, I always love it when people have three diagnoses because that's pretty much ball game at that point you know there's no maybe you know one you're right it is subjective Med medicine is practice so you know you go get a second opinion and lock it in and a third one makes it pretty much undeniable kathy has als there's no there's no question about that yeah. so unfortunately so this trial in detail this is a this is a 50 50 or one-to-one -one placebo uh trial meaning that uh, for there are 100 people who will receive the trial drug and 100 people, sadly, who will receive placebo and uh, be used as guinea pigs because the FDA um, required this placebo. Uh, this trial was designed before the new regulations or, or the new guidance came out. And so talk to me a little bit about your thought process. Did you, how did that how did placebo weigh into your choice to go ahead and go for the trial or did you ever consider going abroad and getting treatment before doing the trial? Um, you don't like the odds of 50-50, but 50-50 is better than 100% loss. Agreed. Um, so the one thing that we want to do is we're here in the States and there's so many opportunities here in the States to be able to possibly fight this where it's a, a little bit more affordable than going overseas. Um, so we like the idea that it was pretty close to home. There. Um, we didn't mm -hmm. necessarily like the whole 50, 50, yeah. but in Kathy's mind what she expressed to me was that no matter what she gets, this is research that's going to help the next person who's wow. diagnosed with ALS. But that was our main thing was Kathy was like, you know, even no matter what, this is going to help someone. Oh, that's you know, very, you... that's a very generous attitude. Um, and this, you know, my interviews are totally uh, uncensored. I allow people to, to say whatever they want about this product. Um, you know, I don't steer these interviews in any way. And I, I, I tend to kind of disagree with that opinion. So, but I absolutely respect your, uh, your thinking on that. And uh, at least the people in the placebo group, it is true. Uh, they are helping to confirm that this that this product works. Um, and yeah. so, I, so I, I do grant you that. Tell us how your bone marrow aspiration went and, uh, and a little bit about the actual trial once you started getting into it. I have to say, uh, Kathy, during the removal of the bone, the bone marrow, uh, didn't really have any side effects. The doctor, um, anesthesiologist, or, or whatever you want to call him, the one who did the removal of, of the stem cells was mm -hmm. incredible. She never really had the side effects of anything. Um, there was never any problems. We did the 24 hour staying overnight and then we were clear to go, you know, just a little tired here and there and, you know, a little bruising in the back, um, but really nothing that was, that sidelined her during the process of, okay. of the actual process itself. We felt that her, her progress was, was stopped, you know, her progression was, was stopped during the, you know, while she was doing this procedure. And now of course, you know, we're done with the trial. Um, right. So we're feeling that there's a progression again, but during the actual portion, portion where you're receiving the stem cells mm -hmm. or the, placebo, um, we felt that there was, there was a difference and that she continued to, to keep her strength. Um, that's amazing. And so for people that don't know, again, this is a, a, a trial where you get three injections, you get the first one, 
the second one, and then the third one. And those are spaced roughly six weeks apart, um, varying a little bit there, five to six weeks. What At what point, uh, Kathy um, and Emily, what point did, did Kathy's progression start to, did you feel like you might have felt, what else do we need to do, really, frankly? Uh, we've got a big problem right now in this country. Uh, for the first time in history, we have a therapy that is slowing the progression of ALS, undeniably, uh, in roughly 40 to 50% of the people who are in this trial and who we think, we don't know, nobody knows for sure, are getting the real product. We've seen cases where people got better very quickly, but we don't know enough to say that they actually stayed better. Mm -hmm. And so promising is really the best we can say at this yeah. point. Now, I've got about 16 total names at this point. 16. Um, Kathy was, it, it takes a lot of courage, uh, to do what she did tonight. Okay. I've, it's been very difficult to find people willing to talk about this, uh, for various reasons. This is a very private disease. It's a, it's a nightmare. A lot of people don't announce their disease to their family or friends until it becomes obvious. And so, you know, this, it's challenging to find these people. Some people get a little bit of harassment. Uh, surprisingly, um, people have said, uh, you know, we don't think you really had ALS. It's unbelievable. I mean, or they say, well, we don't know if you're in cahoots with the company. I mean, it, these things are ridiculous. I am in no way, shape or form uh, affiliated with Brainstorm or any of these therapy companies. I have ALS and I want to live. And I salute Kathy for doing this. And I would love to invite any of those 16 people uh, that I haven't already interviewed to come forward and to do what you just saw here. I'll give you final approval rights. Uh, I just, I just want people to understand that we, we, we have a big, big problem right now. Uh, we are, we are as a society choosing to accept ALS the way it is right now, right now. Radicava works in 7% of the total ALS population, 7%. And it slows the disease down by 30%. Never had a single U S trial was invited to apply by the FDA. A drug is approved, and it is making a fortune out there right now. Brainstorm, small Israeli company, you know, they're fighting for you just like they are for everybody else with ALS. They want their product approved. They do not want to complete the trial. They have to complete the trial because the FDA makes the rules. That's as simple as it gets. So while we have a, uh, the approval of Radicava, this cash cow out here making billions of dollars a year, in revenue, much of which, as you know, gets paid to ALSA and all these different sponsorships. And yet we have a product that's actually making a difference. 50% of the people who take it have a cessation of, of their ALS progression or a, or a slowing down, or in best case, the outliers stop completely and even get better. We're at crisis level now. That's where we're at. Okay, We are at crisis level right now because every day that passes, without this product being on the market means that people are dying from this freaking nightmare without a chance to ever try to save their life. So I would urge you to join the fight, please, please. Likewise, if you're out there sitting on the fence, if you have ALS or just got diagnosed and you're not sure, join the fight. Okay. Join the fight. You are, you, you are not likely to make it uh, until this drug is available unless we change the course of history. That's what we're doing here. We're trying to change history. And it's not easy. But look at what we've accomplished in the last year. You know, we went from 2019 being a year where people called us divisive and angry and all that other stuff uh, back in April. And we ended the year, ended the year with uh, FU on a freaking billboard in Times Square, uh, thanks to IMALS. You know, we, we went to D.C. in June and did a protest. We met with ALSA. They told us they don't even do advertising. And they don't fund uh, therapies based on how promising they are individually. Uh, they don't single out anything. They look at uh, all these other kind of things, and they do. They have a shotgun type of strategy. And it's failing. It's failed. Okay? It, it has failed. We need to start over. We need to rebuild this. The key to ALS is not a cure right now. We're still miles away from that. That is long speak is what that is. They are telling you, give us your money. They have no plan. 
no plan to develop therapies or access therapies earlier. We do. We went and we got, with the help of Brian and other many other advocates, too many to name, we got two bills introduced into Congress. Actually, three technically, but two. One of them is a co-bill, co House and Senate. I don't. One of them is actually called the Placebo No More Act. Now, that name's not a coincidence. The other one is a conditional approval bill. Finally, today, also tweeted, well, we'll think about supporting it. We're checking it out. What is there to think about? Conditional approval could change the future of ALS now. It could approve this therapy early. Thank you to people like Representative uh, Jeff Fortenberry, Nebraska, for his leadership on this. I saw he met with FDA Director Scott Hong, busting butt, trying to figure out ways to get this approved. Senator Braun's been huge on this. Senator Coons, you know, all of these people now formed an, forming an ALS caucus in the Senate. All of this is from advocacy. Works. None of this is happening because of, of big fundraising. It's happening because of grassroots advocacy. We were told in June, we don't do advertisements. Well, guess what? Brian Wallach's getting ready to unveil a brand new national advertising campaign. This is ALS leadership. This is what it looks like. We've all heard the phrase, if you don't like something, you know, the way something's getting done, do it yourself. And that is exactly what we need you to do. We need you to fight for your life right now. We need you out there knowing the truth. Okay, when you put out a mission statement that says your, your primary goal in life is to urgently support and find new therapies for ALS, then you damn better well do it. And if you don't do it, then you will lose your spot at the top of the heap. Here with people, that's happening right now. I urge all of you, all of you, to call also tomorrow and ask them, why are you not supporting conditional approval? Why are you not advocating for Neuron? Guess what? There is no law that prevents people, like also 501c3s from pre-approval promotion. They could get on TV and go have a press conference, go, guess what? We got something that's kind of slowing down ALS in about 50% of people. What are we going to do about it, America? What are we going to do about it? So, have you seen anything like that? I'm not asking for your money. I'm not making 400K a year. Why am I here? Why, why am I doing this? Which, as you know, sadly, we, we lose a, a whole generation of pals. And we get a brand new generation of pals. And we send them to D.C. to advocate. We ask them to make last wills and testaments and all this other stuff. And guess what? Nothing changes. Even if the cure for ALS was found tonight, it would still be. It would still be years before you could take it. And I don't know about you, but I don't have years. And it's wrong to take money from one group of people and keep passing it down to the next generation and keep passing the buck. It's about T-Regs. It's about this Kadima stem. It's about CUATSM. It's about finding ways to get drugs approved faster than 10 years. That's what it's about. See you all later. Should, should do. And that's not at all the situation we're trying to buy time. This is a bridge to get us to the future, right? And so right. Uh, I, I think you're absolutely spot on the money there with your analysis. There is no reason to be withholding this from people. Some of these are longer than others, but you've, you've came right out and said it, um, you know, that, that you feel like the product works. And, uh, do you, you know, do you, leave, do you have any doubt Kathy, in your own mind, that Neuron helped you during the trial? Is there any doubt at all? None. No, there's no doubt in her mind. We were just discussing it the other day in regards to it. She believes that it helped her and it helped delay her progress. It's amazing. You know, Absolutely one, amazing. Because, you know, there's different websites that you can get onto and have people talk to to and to you and stuff. And and like she was explaining to me the other day, they like there were two other women who were diagnosed exactly the same time she was with the bulbar um, okay. ALS and okay. she, was, Kathy was able to get on the stem cell research program. And one of the other women wasn't able to get on it and she's passed. You know what I mean? So God, that's it, awful. It, extends, it extends not only life, but 
the quality of life, you know, because Kathy was talking, she was, she ha she was mobile, you know, I think that makes a difference too. It's like, we want to extend life, but I think we want to extend quality of life as well. No question. You know? I mean, I, I don't, the fear factor is something with ALS. Like Kathy, I, I did the same thing. I couldn't sleep for a week as you know, just like you said, you know, when you couldn't sleep for a period of time, the diagnosis is it, it, it's unbelievable. It's so devastating. Uh, and I, we just found out today that another Israeli company has a product called Kadima stem, which is another, uh, which is another product that uses uh, stem cells. Um, and it actually worked so well in phase one that they decided that they wanted to modify the terms of the trial to, uh, they had a low dose, a medium dose, and a high dose. And they, they modified the low dose or they submitted an application to modify the low dose to double it uh, because it, it's showing promise. It's work, you know, it's, it's just like neuron. It's working for some people. So right. isn't it amazing that, uh, I think I first saw on Alsa's website in 2009 how promising stem cells would be, but it looks like, can't even say it, Kadima Stem, it's also going to be a competing product as well. And so, you know, we're equal opportunity offenders here. In other words, I don't care if it's Neuron, frankly, or Kadima Stem, as long as we get people the ability to try something that is going to extend their life with ALS, that's really the, the core issue here, isn't it? And the fact that they're both coming from Israel that's a little interesting also, isn't it? What, what, do you have any final thoughts on that? And would you try, would you try the Kadima stem product too? You know, if, if you ever got the opportunity to do that. Yeah. Kathy would be willing to <laughs> try it. You know, it takes courage to do, uh, to do Kathy, to, to come out and to talk about this and Emily and you guys are beautiful people. I'm so sorry that we're in this battle. Um, and it really does take courage to come forward and talk about this. There are many more people like you. I want to assure you of that. And those that those who are watching at home, um, it, not everybody is willing to do what you just saw here tonight. I, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why I have to struggle to find people that are willing to speak. But to those who have, I always want to say thank you again because um, we need more people to speak out. Actually, uh, you know, we 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 are working hard behind the scenes to get this information to the people who, who need it. Because frankly, not everybody believes that this actually works, ladies. And I, and I, the more people that say it does, frankly, the better chances we have. And, and I just want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart uh, in the ALS community for doing what you did tonight. And, uh, and Kathy, wish you uh, thank you, Mike, for giving us a voice. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. It means a lot to hear that. All we need is one break, right, ladies? That's all we need. We need one, <laughs> we need one voice. And we can win this battle. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, we, will, we will talk to you guys again soon, okay? All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.